So I never dreamed that this position would go this far for this long. Let's talk about the mystery charts and the methodology in action. So we have a reveal this week. The mystery chart reveal is ZK. And this is what it looked like last week or two weeks ago, last show. It had nice thrust from lows. Notice it had lots and lots of Landry light. Nice little deep pullback to that 30 EMA. So this is also known as a Landry light pullback. Entry was there, stop was there, and the IPT was here. So this is exactly as I showed it last week, and we were already long this particular stock, and it was actually still set up as a pullback, as you can see, a trip pivot pullback and also a Landry light pullback, as I just said. Anyway, so we'll take a look at what happened. Here were the original parameters. I first recommended it on the 14th. I don't know exactly which day it triggered. It might have taken a day. It took two days, I think, to trigger. Anyway, it gave us a smoking report, which is pretty exciting. So here's the setup once again. It triggered and didn't do a whole lot. It came right back in. In fact, we had a loss on the first day in or second day in, and that could be a little demoralizing, but got to stick with it and see each position to its fruition. That's something I was talking about in just one second. So anyway, once you hit that initial profit target or the IPT as I often call it, then you're taking off, remember, half of your shares and you're bringing that stop to break even. And that helps, obviously, but not guarantee that the worst thing can happen to you is you break even a second loaf of the trade. And the best thing would be for this thing to take off forever. Unfortunately, this one hasn't done that just yet. So we'll take a look at what happened here. You can see it just kind of meandered back and forth for a while. And then I think I got whacked a couple of days ago. Uh, this slide might be a day or two old, but it did get whacked the day after the election. That's always a little demoralizing. You're like, oh, great. You know, my stocks are doing good. And then all of a sudden the market takes off and you don't take off with it. Well, it happens. And sometimes in, in, in this particular case, for instance, it took off before the market took off. So anyway, you do want to see each position to its fruition. I don't know why I can't say that tonight. All right, I want to follow up on the CLOV from a while back. Remember, this was a Landry Light pullback. Come back to this once we finish the segment on a million little things, and this will make more sense in one second. But you had a stock that trades fairly cleanly. Where I'm going with this is it. this is a really good example in stock selection. And it began to accelerate higher, and you had lots and lots of Landry Light. The big blue arrow was also pointing higher. And you had a nice little Landry Light deep pullback to the 30 EMA. And you can see down here, the Landry Light goes back to zero whenever you intersect that moving average. So entry was there, stop was there, and initial profit target was here. So again, that's the entry. And what's what was kind of cool is two days in, we're up 400, but about two weeks in, we're down $360. But it did take off. and when you hit that initial profit target, you bank half, remember. I know it's everybody here <laughs> knows all this, but believe me, there'll be some people that are watching uh, that don't. Anyway, so you bank a thousand. That was in this particular case, uh, it was it'll always be a thousand dollars, two thousand, one thousand, two thousand is what you're risking. And when you hit the initial profit target, you'll be up two thousand. You take off a thousand at that point, and then you trail a stop higher. First to break even on the day that it hits intraday when it hits the IPT, and then you trail it loosely on the remainder. Now, this one was kind of shocking because in addition to that thousand dollars we already banked, we had on the remaining thousand shares we had seventeen ten in open profit. This is where I was going a second ago. Was this is on a hypothetical one hundred k account? Although I do take these trades in my model account, and I do show where I bought two thousand. Of this one, and I forget which week it charts it was. I had to just dig that out or just grab the trades again to show you. But I did go in at 2000, and my entries were a little bit different. My exits were slightly different on the initial profit target, but they were close enough. I think I may have used a little discretion. But anyway, I found it interesting. I didn't realize it had drawn down that much, but it was up over 1700. And then when I put this in, it was down only up 790, and now it's only up 470 on the remainder. Now, it would suck if it came back in and stopped us out. But making 1% overall on your accounts in one position over, let's say, eight or nine weeks, 
that's better than a poke in the eye is what I say. But hopefully, I know you said hope, but hopefully that won't happen. And I'll follow up on all these. Now, this was uh, crypto is not too exciting this week. I didn't really have any new trades that I mentioned in the group or mentioned publicly anywhere. And so I decided uh, not to just show you something that uh, I hadn't first mentioned. But this was in the last week of charts. This is the original slide. And with the crypto, I'm just using a 20% IPT. When you look at the service archives, davelearner.com slash archives, you'll notice that in some stocks, you might see the initial risk, which is the same as the initial profit target, by the way, at like 15%. In other ones, it might be as high as 33% or, or, or even higher in some cases if it's, it's, super, if it's super volatile. In crypto, I just use 20%. It's an even round number. And also, when these things go, they seem to be able to pop 20% very easily. Obviously, I'm talking about the shit coins, SHYT, the altcoins. But anyway, this was a bit of a bummer because this, I did mention it in the last week's or two weeks ago webinar. And then I was a little bummed out because I ended up bailing on it. Now, I don't, a uh, little confession time here. And that's one thing I've been thinking about lately. It's like, I want to, I want to show you the good. I also want to show you the bad too, just so you, you could wrap your head around trading from, from a more holistic standpoint. So in this particular case, this was this was actually a loss, and then it began to take off afterwards. Okay, well, it happens, right? So I wanted to make sure I showed you this to make make sure you realize it doesn't always work out. And in my confession here is that in crypto, I really don't take uh, good notes. I really shouldn't take. I really don't take. I don't know what's wrong with my my tongue tonight. I really should spend more time documenting what I do, but it's such a small portion of what I do. I, I'm not taking it serious from that aspect. So I need to document it more. So where I'm going with that is I don't know exactly why I did what I did. I might have, because these are small accounts, I might have bailed on it because it wasn't doing anything and then switched into another pair that was moving at the time. But anyway, so I did allow myself to get out and obviously in hindsight and just, it really shouldn't, you know, maybe I should have tried to held a little bit deeper in here. Anyway, so stop that now. It was like a $30 loss. No big deal. All right. Let me do a quick update on the TFM 10% system on the P's and on the Q's, P's and Q's. The zone lines I have in here at the top of the line would be 100% of the 50-week closing high. And the bottom of this first zone would be... 5% or more away from the 50 week closing high. And then the bottom of the next zone would be 10% or more away from the 50 week closing high. Okay. And my premise here is to avoid the occasional diaper change moment that occasionally happens in an index. Keith is saying, why, uh, why so tight of a stop on what Keith? Sometimes, well, like I said, sometimes what stops might be 33%. When you look at those spreadsheets, from the archives, I might be able to pull up the live one tonight in a few minutes. But when you look at the spreadsheets, you'll see that there's sometimes you're risking 33% because the stop has to be so far away. And sometimes you might be only risking 15% or even less. So it, it depends on where the stop is, is placed. Anyway, this was to help avoid diaper change moments. If a market's gonna lose 50% of its value, it's gonna lose 10% first. So, my thinking is when it loses 10% of its value, get out the way. And then I put in a 50 week moving average as a whipsaw filter. So when those rules are both met, a close down in this hot pink zone, which means it's 10% or more away from this 50 week closing high and a close below the 50 week moving average. And again, that's a whipsaw filter. Uh, in some cases, so notice here that the 50 week moving average is way down here. In this case, it closed below the 10% line or down more than 10% from the 50-week closing high, but the moving average was above it, okay? So that it didn't matter because the moving average was above it. But over here, if it dipped down into this 10% zone, it wouldn't be a sell until and unless it closed on a weekly basis, calendar weekly basis, below that 50-week moving average. Anyway, buy is a little more stringent just to avoid getting in and out too much. You want to get out the way as soon as possible. And when you get back in, you want to be a little bit more cautious and try to avoid as much whipsaw as possible. 
Anyway, two bars of Landry lights, and you buy on that close again in a Friday situation. The sell again would be below the moving average and below the 10% line. In this particular case, you can see that's a long ways away. Now, as I said a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, in fact, the zones were moving higher, which is kind of excited. That exciting. That means we're making obviously new 50 week, 50, yeah, 50 week closing highs. I think I went with 50 weeks because I was using a 50 week moving average just to keep the math right. But 52 weeks is probably fine if you wanted to uh, do a whole year with the with the look back. But anyway, again, the zones are rising again now that the market is making new highs. So you can see when it's not making new highs like back here, notice the zones went flat. And as it keeps making lower and lower, uh, keeps dropping further and further, these zones begin to drop with it eventually. Now, that's one thing that I did kind of built into the system was some lag. So it will take you a while to get back into a market. We have other ways of getting back into markets. And this was never intended to be a complete mechanical system, although I, I am following it with a small amount of money in the queues. And there they are there. That was the buy signal. And like I said in prior weeks, I never dreamed that this position would go this far for this long. And I checked it earlier today. I don't know where the queues, I forget where they close. I know they close at an all time high. But the queues were up with a 500 handle, and I got into this thing in the 300s. So it's 192.77 points, a 60% run. I, who's, uh, you know, what are the chances of getting into an index and run and catch at a 60% run? It's, it's, that doesn't happen that often. In an index like this, I'd be happy with a 10% or a 15% or a 20% move would be pretty amazing. So. I'm not bragging on the system. I'm just amazed that the market was able to do this. And you know, the other thing it, it helps me to do as I'm kind of looking at this, because I've been pretty bearish here and there in between on 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 the market since this thing triggered. But when you look at this longer term weekly chart, it does help you to put things in perspective. Like the market looks pretty good when you're looking at this chart, but then it gets a lot scarier when you're looking at that that daily chart, right? Anyway, longer term stuff. Uh, the just real quick, and I've just showed you this because I, my new thing is let me show you the good and the bad with, with a pure trend following system. Now, remember, as you just saw, we're using a hybrid approach, but a pure sim trend following system. And I know I'm beating the dead horse on this, but your drawdowns are abysmal and your accuracy sucks. <laughs> but you can see when I first got in this thing back here, I was feeling pretty darn good after a few weeks of uh, question, uh, scratching my head for doing that. But then it pulls back, and that's a $4,400 loss. Nearly all of the gains that were gained, okay, or, or whatever from the prior run, and it had the potential to go negative by the time it triggered a stop out. Anyway, there was another $3,600 drawdown here, and this one hurt a little bit, $8,000. And again, when I put this on, like I said, it was kind of like an S&G thing, only about 100 shares. And then it became, it turned into kind of real money. So. I guess I'll keep following it with uh, with the cues. Anyway, should it stop out, and let's hope it goes a little bit further before it does, it would be a $6,200 drawdown. But I'm far enough ahead now to where it would suck, okay? Don't get me wrong. But I've almost kind of resolved myself to stick with this thing no matter what until and unless I am stopped out. It'll eventually slap out, but it'll be fun to see how far it goes. I know you're a part of me. Anyway, hope, hopefully I didn't spend too much time on all that. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to follow up. People that are new to the show are like, hey, <laughs> this guy talks fast over a bunch of stuff and other people, eyes are glazing over. Anyway, uh, this is the Landry, this is Landry 100. It's something that I started again a few months ago, I think uh, beginning of June. And the whole system is you're just looking for 52-week highs, okay, on a closing basis through a tradable universe. And I think a tradable universe is probably, I would say, at least 200,000 shares on average, maybe a little bit more. And right now, I'm looking at 52-week closing highs. And I think that if the market got a little iffy, God forbid, I might look at shorter-term closing highs to find things for it. But I seem to be able to find plenty enough stocks 
as these 52 week closing highs, especially now. Now, last week I was beginning to wonder. But the thing about this list is now I don't actually trade this. This is just a shits and giggles kind of thing. This is, I know you want to party with me, but this is kind of something fun to do so I can see where the leadership is in the market. And a while back, it's like, I hated to do it, but I was forced to put REITs in this thing and utilities. And it's like, what the heck is going on, you know? But that's the areas that were fastly becoming momentum. And that's the great thing about this. It helps me to see these things as they occur. But anyway, I thought it was kind of cool. This one today was up 43%, almost 44%. And 148% since I started tracking. So I know I've showed something similar in the past. I just want to show you that this was actually bought right at right there at these 52-week highs. And again, that's technical analysis at its finest. If if a market's going to go from A to B and D is somewhere in between, sometimes you could just buy a B. Now, let me back that back a little bit, roll that back a little bit. Unless, of course, IPOs will be fine for the buy B pattern. As a general statement, though, if you are going to buy into new highs in a market, because breakout trading can be, uh, your results can be very, very low in accuracy. But if you're buying these breakouts and these new highs, because you never know, of course, where you're going to buy a new high right into a correction, as a lot of these do, and I've shown in previous webinars, but anyway, if you buy enough of them, you're going to catch the 43% and 44% moves occasionally and end up with a triple digit gain in some of these things. And the idea is to see how long we could ride these out, see how big these gains can become. And it's 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 fun. It's because there's not a whole lot of stress in doing it, and it's not a tremendous amount of work. But anyway, I've been working on this obviously for a few months and it it tells you a lot. Now, I'll, I'll uh, if you guys want it in the Facebook group, I'll um, I'll shoot you a list of the stocks over there. So anyway, this was 148% gain, and then if you look over here, 107, 90%, and they go down from there. Now there's some stickers in here. Don't get me wrong. In fact, let's take a look at that too. Now, one thing about momentum is momentum is fantastic. But it does end badly. And at one time, uh, my kunash just slipped out of the badly. Uh, <laughs> uh, one time, uh, who was it? Uh, Mike Moody, I think, was giving a speech and um, on momentum and all. And I asked him. Uh, I said, uh, "It always momentum ends badly. If you uh, if you figure out a way to solve for that, I'll, you'd never see my fat ass again." And uh, it was really cool. He's like, Dave, if you're going to have a baby, you're going to have a lot of baby poop. Baby's really cool, but they come with a lot of baby poop. Anyway, his point was that you have to take the good with the bad. And, and that's kind of the thing I want to kind of focus on more and more is the good and the bad. Because everybody wants to hear about the good. Nobody wants to hear about the bad. But that could keep you in an endless cycle of holy grail hunting. All right, anyway, so... This is some ugliness that I noticed today, and this one obviously came out today, but you could see that it got waxed 20-something percent today. And what's interesting is it was actually must have been up quite a bit because it was only a 12.67% hit by taking it out near the close or on the close. But you can see there's some other spankings in here. This one's still up 34%. I don't know if it came out or not, but down 23% today, it likely came out with that spill. But so it's not always um, fantastic and, and it happens, believe me. Okay, Harry wants to list the Facebook. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in there tomorrow. All right, let's talk about trading open and gap reversals and also with the idea of possibly a head start on a position trade. So this was OKLO, and I forgot to grab the Facebook post, but I did post it in Facebook before I took the trade. So just an FYI, that was posted at Dave Landry's Trend Traders, which, by the way, is free, but you do have to be a member, at least a gold member of DaveLandry.com to participate. Anyway, so that was the, the buy on that opening gap reversal. And let me show you what I did. It's came back nicely during the morning and had a bit of a sell-off and it came back nicely. And so I went ahead and anticipated that it was gonna push into that gap 
and I'm I may have gotten in a little bit early on this one, but it looked like I was in pretty good shape. But unfortunately, I got stopped out fairly quickly, in about an uh, hour and a half later or so. Now, what happened was I had a trailing stop in, I think like a one point trailing stop, was, which was too tight, and it spiked up and then it stopped me out. Now, what I probably should have done, and especially now I'm looking at this, is I probably should have put, in a case like this, a couple, just a couple hundred shares, it's kind of like an SG type of trade, but, but still a couple hundred shares is plenty. But what I should have done was I should have had an initial profit target up there so it would get hit. I'm not sure whether it would have, if it would have gotten hit anyway, but I did get stopped out for a, a small loss on this. Now, what I did do, and I did this across more than one account, but I did buy late in the day when I saw it breaking out. Now, this is not exactly how you trade an opening gap reversal. Usually it's earlier in the morning and it maybe makes a, a range and then it takes out that range to the upside. This was a late day entry. Sometimes those could actually be the best ones. It's like the, they mess around during the morning and then in the afternoon, all of a sudden they take off late in the day. So that's one thing that I probably need to watch more for is when I'm looking at these opening gap reversals, make sure I put some alerts in and keep the alerts in just in case there's a late day trigger. But in this case, last half hour of the day, it looked like it was breaking out. So instead of waiting for it to make new highs in the day, I went ahead and bought in around 2050, 2059 or so. And by the close, I was actually up a little bit, maybe a hundred bucks if that much, but it wasn't, it was better than a poking the eye type of thing. And it also erased the morning day trade on this. Okay. So it was not only erased the morning loss, but it also had a small profit. And in this particular account, it was a small uh, share size and all. I said, well, you know what? I like that OKLO and I did, I do, and I got to be careful, don't get goaded, but I have a client who knows a, 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 an older gentleman, older than he is, who is always in like the, the what was that one a while back? Well, let's just say the NVIDIAs and, and, and stocks like that. And he buys and holds these things. Now, I don't recommend you buy and hold, but I'd like to look at this chart and the fact that he was telling me about his friend who was in OKLO forever or whatever, just got me thinking about it. Okay, well, it does look pretty good from a technical standpoint, and it has the buzz of, I think it's like, um, it one of those, it's got some of the buzz going on with something. I might be getting confused with another one, but I think this is like one of those utilities with the nuclear potential or whatever micronuclear type of thing like NNE and remember what happened with that one it was fantastic but anyway it wasn't a huge share size and I'm like you know what I, I don't mind owning a couple hundred shares of this and I, and I think I'm kind of answering my question I think if you if you want to actually own the stock then by all means you could use an opening gap reversal to get in on the flip side if you are doing a pure day trade on something and whether you're losing or winning, do not carry it overnight because that math is not going to work out longer term. If you're doing an intraday trade, a market can only go so far intraday. But believe me, it can go a long ways overnight. I had a, like a 90% loser I showed a few weeks ago, again, along the theme of showing you the, everything warts and all. But anyway, that's that's the close of the day right there. So this is where I got in and I did keep those 200 shares and so far so good. Now, technically I should have probably flipped them out because it was was like uh, five points earlier today or whatever. I probably should have flipped out half of them, but I didn't actually go in with a plan other than I did want to own this one particular stock. And I'm not preaching buy and hold, I'm just showing you that this thing was somewhat set up on a daily and then it made the open a gap reversal on top.